Well, if you're watching this, it means I decided to put it on YouTube. So I am <clears throat> currently heading to the doctors to have an echocardiogram done. And if you don't know what that is, this is my first time doing it. And what I was told is it's kind of like a sonogram of your heart and it'll be a picture of my heart. So, we'll see how this goes. Okay, I just got to the doctor's office, so I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna do the echocardiogram, and we'll go from there. Just finished the sonogram. Okay, today is a Tuesday. I got back from San Antonio um, this past Saturday afternoon. Trip was great. I had no real anxiety. There was one night where we went out and it was like a little crowded and I was like, oh, I could see it happening. Um, but other than that, I was, I was fine. Um, and so today I am heading to see the electrophysiologist. So today's my fourth appointment. My first appointment was with my general practitioner and I did the EKG that same day. My second appointment was with the cardiologist and my third appointment was for the echocardiogram. So today is the electrophysiologist. So not only are they a specialist of the heart, but they're a specialist of the electrical part of the heart which is where my issue lies. So I'm heading there this morning. I'm sure I won't get any recording inside and stuff like that. But when I get out of the appointment, I'll let you guys know how it goes. I brought my notebook so I don't forget anything. All right, let's go. Okay, I just got out of the doctor's office. I met with the doctor that will or possibly will be doing the surgery. I wasn't sure, see I'm like getting my appointments kind of like mixed up. My understanding is he's an electrophysiologist but he's also like a cardiac surgeon. I guess I'm not sure all the right titles. Um, but I really liked him. I think that's important. I have never had surgery done. I mean, I have had my wisdom teeth out and I've had LASIK, <laughs> that's like it. Um, so he was really patient with me, answered all my questions. I, I feel like before going into this, I was like, okay, if he says to do the surgery, I'm just going to do it. And now I'm like nervous. He drew on this little picture for me. Um, I could show you guys, but if you see like the little X there, that is where they think the electrical line is. So I'm gonna discuss it more with AJ, um, see what AJ thinks. AJ's got some questions for the doctor and we're gonna go from there right now. But yeah, and they said, most likely I'll be in and out the same day, but like right after the surgery, I have to be in bed rest for five hours. And then I pretty much can't work for a week. So that's gonna be a little rough. So, okay, so here's the heart. This is what I have, WPW. Um, so like this is the normal electricity of the heart. And then, so that's how like your heart electricity works. It's like a W, I guess. Well, I have like an extra pathway. So he thinks it's in this area, but he said he, they have like, normally it's over here, I guess. And he said he'd have to go through a little bit of an extra wall. So there's some extra risk to it. But he can't tell if it's in this area or if it's in a vein. And if it's in a vein, there's more risk. So just have to weigh the pros and cons. I am about to head home in a minute. I'm at the farm right now. Um, AJ and I have a call with a doctor to get a second opinion on the heart procedure. Um, because of the coronavirus going on right now, 
I am going to ask the doctor about that. You know, the last doctor really, like, he wasn't, like, one way or another, which is why we decided, I mean, we should get a second opinion anyways. That is part of the reason we decided to get a second opinion was just to see if a, if another doctor feels that same way, you know, that it's not urgent, but it's just like, I don't know which way to go. Yesterday, AJ and I had a phone call with the doctor. I'm in my car right now and it's raining, so you guys might be able to hear it. I don't know. Um, but anyways, so after talking to the doctor, we were really happy, very comfortable with him. So both doctors we've met um, that could possibly be doing the surgery, we were really happy with. After talking to this doctor, we decided I should wear a heart monitor. And I don't know if I said it before, but like we had thought about me wearing a heart monitor and then we thought maybe it'd be pointless. So I wasn't going to do it. Well, this doctor felt like if I am to have an anxiety attack or a panic attack with the heart monitor on, that they might be able to see something called SVT. I can't remember exactly what it stands for right now. Um, but it's like that my heart is pumping faster. Um, so I, it's, I don't quite understand everything, but I'm happy I have AJ cause he does. Um, but anyway, so I got the heart monitor. It is right there. So it's like a big sticker on me and it's not that bad. I can't really like tell it's there. It's just, yeah. So anyways, I'm going to be wearing this for two weeks and I actually just have a box that I'm going to stick it in and mail it. And then we'll see what the results are. So hopefully I don't pass out. Um, but then they'll really get some answers. <laughs> but I think on average I have about a panic attack once a week. It'll be my luck and I probably won't have a panic attack for two weeks. Which would be great. And not helpful at the same time. So that's where we're at for now. Okay, so it has been a while since I have recorded a clip about my heart. Today is July 16th. Uh, between AJ and I, we had basically, or you know, he agreed with what I wanted to do. I had basically decided um, I would have the ablation done, but I wanted to wait till after grape harvest, which is supposed to be mid-August. So when they started calling me, the hospital started calling me to make um, an appointment for my surgery, I asked them, can we push it back till September? That way I get through grape harvest, then I can do the surgery. And hopefully if it's in September, all like everything will be good before corn harvest starts in October. So that was like roughly the plan. Well, a few days ago I passed out again. I was driving my tractor in the vineyard and I felt it coming on. So it, it all happens so fast. So like as soon as I got the feeling that I was going to pass out, I immediately stopped my tractor. I actually was able to turn on a song on my phone just like really quickly thinking it's going to be like calm and help me. And the next thing I remember was my head was on the steering wheel of the tractor and I like lifted up my head and then I go into like this immediate panic and I shut the song off on my phone and I got out of the tractor and I called AJ. I kind of did this by accident, but because I started that song and as soon as I woke up, I stopped it. I was roughly able to figure out how long I was passed out for and that's something I have not been able to do. I mean, I have no idea. It could literally be five seconds or it could be minutes, you know? Um, so I estimated I was probably passed out for 45 seconds because the song had just hit a minute. So that's like kind of a lot of time. I mean, if I, my tractor was moving, if I was getting close to a ditch, you know, really bad things could happen. So I'm feeling very grateful and lucky that I did have enough time to stop my tractor before it got me knocked out completely. Um, it is a scary situation for sure. So because that happened, um, I immediately emailed all the doctors we've been working with and made the decision that I should not wait any longer for the ablation. So like I said, today is the 16th. 
I will be having the ablation done on the 28th. That was the soon as they could get me in. Because of everything going on with the virus, I do have to go get a COVID test just a couple days before the surgery. I also have to get some blood work done, maybe another EKG and an, a chest x-ray. So that's all gonna be happening next week. And then we'll go in for the surgery. Fun times, guys. Fun times. Um, so, yeah. I'll catch you when I am doing blood work and x-ray and COVID test. All right, I am on my way to the hospital right now to take a COVID test. Because of the surgery and everything that's going on in the world, they require everyone to have a COVID test before. And so today's Saturday and my surgery's on Tuesday. So we're getting close. I'm gonna try to get recording of it. We're not supposed to, so I don't know how that's gonna work. If I stay in my car, I might sneakily try. We'll see. There goes nothing. <laughs> oh my God, okay. It wasn't actually painful. It wasn't painful. I don't know how to describe it. It was the weirdest feeling. And my eyes just crazy. Which she brought me Kleenex prepared for me to cry. <laughs> it just made my eyes water so bad. Whew. <clears throat> that was so strange. That was very strange. I want to make sure I can see before I start driving. Okay, okay. I'm good. I'm good. Let's go. <laughs> okay. I had to pull over. I needed a second. My eyes were still watering. Um, but I also wanted to come and find where my mom needs to drop me off because my surgery is at 5 a.m. So I found the spot. I'm good to go. Now I head back to the farm for the rest of the day's work. All right. Today is the day, the day of surgery. It is 4 a.m. right now. And my mom is picking me up and going to take me to the hospital. AJ actually has school today, um, which I think is good because no one's allowed to go into the hospital with me. So my mom's just going to drop me off and then come back home. Um, and AJ will be in school. And hopefully, I think by 11 a.m. or so, I should be out of surgery and they should know how everything went. But yeah, here it goes. <clears throat> okay, I just got home from the sur from the <clears throat> from the surgery. They knocked me all the way out, so I had a breathing tube. So my throat is still um, kind of sore, and I actually just cut off my bracelets. I've only got this and this where they went into an artery <clears throat> and uh, some other little spots where they went in two veins through my groin actually. Um, 
So I'm gonna rest a little bit and then we'll do a little wrap up of how the surgery went. Maybe, maybe I'll hop on tomorrow and tell you guys everything. All right, we did it. So um, I am home from the hospital and I got home last night. We got home around 5.30 p.m. The surgery was a success. So basically how it went was I got to the hospital yesterday at 5 a.m. and they um, basically had me ready maybe by 6.30 or so. And I was in surgery by 7 or 7.30. And from what I'm told, my mom got the phone call that I was out of surgery around noon. So the doctor told me the surgery took four hours-ish. So it probably really actually ended up starting around eight, but they got me in the operating room probably around seven or 7.30, started at eight. Um, there was no real complications. The only thing was, if you guys remember, I showed you that picture where I had a little X in the heart. He couldn't quite tell where it was because it was like up in a corner. Well, he thought it was on the right side of my heart. So they went up and into the right side. And then when he got up there, he realized it was on the left side. So he did have to come all the way out and go back in. So I have an incision on both sides of my groin instead of one side, but I'm not upset about it because uh, it was still successful. The other thing was he previously couldn't necessarily prove that this was the reason I was passing out because we didn't catch it on the heart monitor. And he still can't necessarily prove it, but one thing he did say, uh, the surgeon said while I was under, he was able to stress my heart and see that electrical, like the electricity go down that extra pathway. And when that happened, my blood pressure dropped um, low enough to a point where I would pass out. So that is just another indicator that hopefully that was what was causing me to pass out. Um, but there's other risks to WPW, things that could affect me later in life, which is why we did decide to go forward with it either way. Um, so now I'm just in recovery. I have a really sore throat um, because they did knock me out all the way, so I had a breathing tube. So I have a sore throat and my neck is really sore, which I'm not exactly sure why, but I do know that my body holds the st my stress and my traps in my neck, so that could just be why. Um, my incision points are a little sore so today i've been laying on the couch all day and i'll probably keep doing that for today and then hopefully each day i'll just be able to walk and get up a little bit more and uh, feel better each day I'm, I'm supposed to be really resting for about a week uh, no driving for like four days so it's gonna be interesting because i'm not very good at resting and doing nothing but today's definitely got to be like a do nothing day and then maybe each day if I feel better, I can do little things around the house, which be, would be nice because I never have time for that stuff. So yeah, and then, um, so it was on the left lower part of my heart and it was a success and I'm happy it's over and I'll be back to normal before we start grape harvest. And I appreciate you guys um, going on this journey with me. And uh, I know I haven't put anything on YouTube previously, but Everyone that's on my Instagram post, I appreciate all the prayers and thoughts and the positive vibes. It, it really does mean a lot to me. And it just shows how powerful the social media, social media community really is. I just, I love all you guys. And um, yeah, so here's to a fast and speedy recovery. And thanks for watching my video. I'll catch you guys later.